Imagine a story that reshapes your understanding of life and what lies beyond it. It revolves around a woman whose brush with death brought her to a new realization about existence. This journey reveals astonishing truths about heaven for those who believe and may forever alter the way you see the world. If this sounds intriguing, don't forget to subscribe and tap that notification bell. You wouldn't want to miss stories that could truly impact your life. And if you find this video meaningful, give it a thumbs up and share it with someone who could benefit from hearing this message. Now let's jump right in. Let me introduce myself. I'm Sarah and I'm 51 years old, working as a data analyst at a leading tech startup in Alabama. My life turned upside down just a few months back, but it feels as if I've lived several lifetimes since then. My days were pretty standard until one particular Saturday afternoon changed everything. I was out jogging, reveling in the fresh air and the soothing rhythm of my feet hitting the ground, when suddenly, sharp pain hit my chest like a bolt of lightning. In an instant, I collapsed on the sidewalk. It wasn't until later that I discovered I had suffered a massive heart attack, triggered by an undiagnosed heart condition. Fortunately, a neighbor saw me fall and quickly dialed for help. When the paramedics arrived, my heart had already stopped beating. They dedicated over 10 relentless minutes to revive me through CPR and defibrillation. During that intense period, I was technically dead, a surreal and frightening truth. But here's where it truly gets mind-blowing. Rather than feeling fear, I was enveloped by a profound sense of tranquility. One second I was in agonizing pain, and the next, I felt as if I was floating above my physical self. I could witness the chaotic efforts of the paramedics below, yet I felt entirely unmoved by the scene. Then something remarkable unfolded. A brilliant light surrounded me, more radiant than anything I'd ever seen. It was like the sun, yet my eyes felt no discomfort. I was irresistibly drawn toward it, almost as though it was beckoning me home. As I ventured closer, I spotted a figure glowing in that divine light. It was Jesus. His presence was unmistakable, despite me never having encountered him before. When he extended his hand toward me, an overwhelming wave of love washed over me. It was all-encompassing, a feeling unlike anything I had ever known in my lifetime. In that instant, every belief I held about life and the afterlife transformed completely. Imagine a moment in your life that turns everything upside down. For me, that was the day I found myself in the presence of Jesus. He calmly told me that it wasn't my time to go, there was still work ahead for me. But then, in an instant, he offered me a glimpse of the future, waiting for those who have faith in him. Suddenly, I was transported to a breathtaking realm that I had never imagined possible. The colors were so vivid they felt alive, much brighter than anything I had ever encountered here on Earth. Before me stretched rolling hills, carpeted with lush grass and flowers of every imaginable shade. A crystal clear river twisted through this paradise, and in the distance I could see a magnificent city, its towers soaring gracefully into the sky. As we strolled through this astonishing landscape, Jesus pointed out all its wonders and assured me that this was just a taste of what heaven holds. Forget the spooky figures that some might picture. He explained that in heaven, we would have real, perfect bodies, completely free from pain or suffering. One of the highlights was the tree of life. Its fruit was something extraordinary, something I had never before tasted. Jesus told me that it bore different fruit every month, with its leaves meant for healing. I saw people of all nations gathered around the tree, glowing with health and joy. And in a moment that took my breath away, I spotted someone familiar, my grandmother. She had passed away years earlier, but there she was, looking youthful and vibrant, a far cry from the frail person I remembered in her final days. Jesus explained that in heaven, faith allows us to reunite with our loved ones and even meet the great figures from the Bible. Can you even fathom it? I saw people warmly talking and laughing with Abraham, Moses, and David. It felt as though I had stumbled upon the ultimate family reunion, bursting with love and connection. Heaven was alive with activity, and it opened my eyes to the incredible potential beyond our earthly lives. It's hard to articulate, really, but the experience drove home the notion that love and connection surpass everything we think we know. I've spent time reflecting on my life and the legacy I hope to leave, 
And if there's one takeaway I want to share, it's that life holds vastly more meaning than we often take the time to recognize. I sincerely hope my story encourages others to ponder their beliefs and appreciate the profound beauty surrounding our existence. Imagine witnessing people come together, crafting the most extraordinary homes imaginable. They were using materials that were entirely new to me. Jesus explained that in heaven, we have the liberty to unleash our creativity in ways that we can't even begin to understand here on earth. And those gardens I saw, folks were happily nurturing vibrant plants and trees, gathering perfectly ripe fruits and vegetables. There was none of the hard work typically associated with gardening back home. It was all about joy. No weeds, no pests, just flourishing life everywhere. Oh, the animals, those moments were truly remarkable. I still recall the serene image of lions lounging beside gentle lambs while children frolicked with bears and tigers. The atmosphere was so friendly and calm, a splendid demonstration of harmony across creation. It felt like a world where violence and fear didn't exist, not only among humans, but also among animals. I can picture it vividly. People riding dolphins in a sparkling river while others flew through the air alongside magnificent eagles. Everything seemed to move in perfect harmony, wrapped in joy and bliss. Love and belonging filled my heart to such an extent that there was no room for fear, worry, or sadness. Every second was pure happiness, a sense of wonder that made me wish I could stay there forever. But the real highlight? Being alongside Jesus. His love surrounded me. It was an indescribably tangible feeling. In that moment, I understood that heaven's true essence transcends its stunning beauty or the activities we partake in. The ultimate joy is found in a deep connection with God. Then came that poignant moment when Jesus gently told me it was time to go back. He revealed those glimpses of heaven to inspire hope in others. He emphasized that what I experienced was just a sample. Heaven's true beauty is beyond what we can dream. In an instant, I felt the pull back to reality. I can still hear a paramedic exclaiming, we've got a pulse. Suddenly, I was back in my body, gasping for air. They hurried me to the hospital where I spent several days recovering from the experience. This entire journey has completely changed my life. Death doesn't frighten me anymore. Instead, I view it as a passage to something truly magnificent. My perspective on life has transformed. Each day is now a treasure and I strive to live with purpose. I genuinely believe that my actions have a profound impact that transcends our earthly existence. There's this eager drive within me to share what I encountered. The reality of heaven is beyond any human imagination. It's vibrant and real. But what's even more crucial is that I want everyone to know about Jesus, for his love is the essence of it all. He is the one who opens the door to heaven's breathtaking beauty. One of the most surprising lessons was about the activities we engage in there. Forget the stereotype of lounging on fluffy clouds and strumming harps Heaven is much more dynamic. Jesus invited me to see a world rich with thrilling adventures, including journeys through the cosmos. It's a place filled with immense joy and endless discovery. I can still recall the exhilarating feeling of exploring distant galaxies and getting up close with stars and planets. It struck me how our minds could expand significantly, allowing us to unlock the universe's secrets in ways we can hardly fathom today. And let's talk about the ocean. Diving into those depths was nothing short of unforgettable. I encountered stunning underwater vistas populated by fantastical beings, creatures beyond anything we can imagine here on Earth. The coolest part? We didn't need any gear. Breathing freely and feeling the water among us, we could navigate the pressures of the deep with ease. Then, there were these absolutely remarkable libraries. Imagine walls filled with every book containing the universe's knowledge. I watched people passionately engaging with the texts, throwing themselves into discussions that sparked enlightening revelations. It felt like the ultimate educational experience, filled with joy and camaraderie, completely free from pressure. What blew my mind the most were the relationships in heaven. They were incredibly profound, unlike anything we know here. There was no room for jealousy or miscommunication just a smooth stream of love and understanding flowing between everyone. It was a beautiful sight, witnessing people of diverse backgrounds and eras sharing laughter and stories together. The barriers of language, culture, and race simply disappeared, 
everyone radiated unity through their mutual love for God and one another. I'll never forget when Jesus reassured me that in this eternal space, we have all the time necessary to build deep, meaningful connections, not only with each other, but also with Him and God the Father. I had the chance to witness some really profound moments where people engaged in deep discussions with God, seeking answers and gaining wisdom straight from the source. It was something else. One of the most fascinating parts about heaven is its creativity. I mean, I can't even put into words how incredible this was. I saw individuals painting in hues that are just not found on earth. The music? It enveloped everything, vibrant and alive, almost as if it had its own personality. There were huge workshops buzzing with excitement, where amazing inventions came to life, not through stress, but through pure joy and delight. The atmosphere was all about freedom, allowing everyone to unleash their most creative selves. Let me tell you about this mind-blowing insight I had regarding heaven. It's a realm so unlike our earthly experiences. Imagine a space where there are absolutely no restrictions. I saw groups of people collaborating on massive projects, constructing entire cities and designing stunning landscapes. It felt like all the limits we know were completely wiped away, turning dreams into real life. Jesus mentioned that just as God is the supreme creator, we too will participate in creation in ways that will leave us in awe. There's just an endless sense of wonder in heaven, bursting with fresh experiences. My curiosity about time was piqued, and Jesus shared that time operates on a whole different level there. You won't encounter the regular cycle of day and night, aging, or any deadlines to fret over. Every single moment is rich and satisfying. You might find yourself lost in the wonders of a distant galaxy or engaging in a lengthy chat with a biblical figure, and it never feels like there's anything else you're missing out on. What really hit home for me is how we'll savor God's eternal nature without any rush or anxiety. It's such a relief to realize that heaven isn't going to be dull or monotonous, which is a fear some people have. Speaking of misconceptions, Jesus helped clarify a few things for me. For example, Heaven isn't just this abstract, floaty realm where our identities vanish. We'll have perfect physical forms, enhanced versions of ourselves. Our senses will be incredibly sharp, enabling us to touch, taste, smell, see, and hear in ways we can hardly fathom right now. And here's a shocker. Heaven isn't just a single spot. It's vast and perpetually expanding. Jesus showed me areas he was preparing, just like he promised in the Bible for every new believer. Every region up there is crafted uniquely for each individual. One of the things that truly warmed my heart was the revelation that we won't abandon who we are in heaven. Actually, it's quite the opposite. We'll be more authentically ourselves than we could ever imagine. Our unique traits, passions, and skills will be enhanced and perfected. I find that really uplifting. Don't you agree? While we're on the subject of heaven, I've got to share my thoughts on the intriguing tree of life and its remarkable fruit. One of my most unforgettable moments revolved around this magnificent tree. Imagine it towering towards the heavens, its branches stretching so high that they seemed to brush against the clouds. And those leaves, wow, they were a vibrant green, almost shimmering with an energy that felt utterly alive. Now, about the fruit that hung from this incredible tree, it was something extraordinary. Each month brought forth a new variety of fruit, and when I finally sampled it, it was like tasting every delightful flavor I had ever known, intensified beyond measure. I can hardly express how extraordinary that experience was, but the essence of it went beyond just the taste. Jesus mentioned how crucial this fruit is for our health and vitality. It keeps our bodies perfectly fit. The leaves, too, hold significant value. They're utilized for healing purposes. I was in awe as I watched individuals bring those leaves down to earth, where they contributed to both physical and spiritual healing. Isn't it fascinating how every element of heaven serves a meaningful role? And there's something else that left me astounded. Heaven isn't merely an isolated realm. It actually has connections to our world. I saw souls in heaven observing what's happening here, praying for those they hold dear. Their prayers intertwine with those of the faithful still on earth, forging a potent force of belief. Those in heaven aren't just idle onlookers. They are actively participating in God's mission of redemption. 
I got a sneak peek into the future too. Jesus revealed an incredible vision of what the new heaven and new earth will look like. Imagine a time when God dwells fully with his people and everything in existence is rejuvenated. How amazing is that? And let's not forget about the animals in heaven. Oh, I need to tell you about them. There were familiar faces and some creatures I had never seen before. Maybe some that have gone extinct or entirely new entities. What struck me most was their serene demeanor. Imagine lions and lambs lounging together peacefully, just like that verse in the Bible. There was an incredible absence of fear or violence. It was astonishing to witness the animals demonstrating a level of awareness and intelligence that feels distant from what we encounter on Earth. That scene was so striking, it lingered in my mind long after. One unforgettable moment was when I spotted a little girl joyfully riding on the back of a huge tiger. They both appeared remarkably calm, as if they belonged to that magical realm. I noticed dolphins weaving gracefully through the river alongside people, while eagles glided effortlessly above, everything and everyone moving as one. It truly felt like the barriers between humans and animals had completely dissolved. Then, in a striking revelation, Monsignor Luciano De Marco shared how, in heaven, our communication with animals will transcend anything we currently know. He reminded me that these creatures are part of God's extraordinary creation, and in that divine place we will connect with them in the way God envisioned. Heaven, as he described it, sounded like the ultimate haven of tranquility and joy. I found myself asking how we could prepare for it while living here in Alabama. Oh, Monsignor had plenty to say about that. He reinforced that entering heaven is a gift we can't earn through our efforts, but our choices in life are still immensely important. He encouraged me to cultivate an eternal perspective, emphasizing that what I decide to do today influences my forever. Fostering my bond with God was essential, he stressed. He suggested I spend time in prayer, he immerse myself in the Bible, and truly strive to deepen my understanding of him. The more I grow closer to him during my time on earth, the more profound my experience in heaven will be. Another key point he raised was the significance of loving others. Each act of kindness, every moment we share our beliefs, creates ripples that extend into eternity. He acknowledged that while our minds might struggle to fully comprehend the glory of heaven, we can still catch glimpses of it in our earthly lives, whether it's through moments of worship, connecting deeply with others, or simply appreciating the beauty around us. I can still hear him urging me to keep an eye out for those heavenly reflections. This whole experience has transformed the way I see life. Now every day starts with a sense of purpose and enthusiasm, a feeling I never knew before. Understanding what's ahead in heaven inspires me to face challenges with courage. I've begun to view people in a new light, recognizing their eternal significance and value in God's eyes. You know, looking back, it's incredible how transformative my experience has been. I've become so much more patient and loving, really. It's made me rethink how I view forgiveness, especially when I consider that the person who challenges me today might end up being my neighbor in heaven someday. I've also noticed that I'm not as attached to material things anymore. Don't misunderstand me, I still appreciate certain possessions, but they just don't have the same hold on me like they used to. Life offers so many amazing moments, and while I cherish them, I've learned to keep a light grip on those experiences. The treasures awaiting us in heaven? They completely overshadow anything we can find here on earth. Above all, my close encounter with death deepened my bond with Jesus. For me, loving him, serving him, and really knowing him, that's what life's all about. Everything else flows from that special relationship. Honestly, before all of this, I would have been skeptical too. Being a data analyst, I typically crave solid evidence and logical reasoning. I completely understand skeptics' viewpoints. My suggestion? Keep your mind open. There's an abundance of near-death stories out there from all sorts of people worldwide, each with their diverse backgrounds and beliefs. While the details may vary, the common threads are strikingly similar, making them hard to dismiss. The effects of my experience are profound. I found a new sense of peace, joy, and purpose that I never anticipated. Yet I know it's not just about taking my word for it. I encourage everyone to dig a little deeper, look into the evidence, 
read other people's stories, and more importantly, establish a personal relationship with Jesus. He's the one who can truly bring the reality of heaven alive in your heart. And oh, when it comes to worship in heaven, it's on a whole other level. Imagine being free from the constraints of time and space, just a perpetual celebration. Everything revolves around glorifying God and His presence is constantly felt. During my experience, I saw immense crowds from every corner of the earth, millions uniting in worship. The music, words can hardly capture it. It was a blend of complexity and purity that made the most exquisite symphony here seem dull. Colors danced through the air, voices merged in joyous harmony, and even the ground felt vibrant with celebration. And you know what? Worship goes beyond just singing. I witnessed so many people pouring their hearts into honoring God. There was a painter, beautifully channeling her devotion through vibrant art, and a scientist, exploring and discovering in a way that reflected his praise for the Creator. It hit me just how diverse our relationship with the divine really is. For me, heaven feels like a realm where everything we engage in transforms into worship, a genuine response to God's love. Just imagine how much richer our understanding of Him will be in that place. When we truly comprehend His nature and all He has accomplished, our praise will spring from our hearts effortlessly. It's not about going through the motions, it's about existing vibrantly in His presence. Oh, the joy. It's a crucial aspect of what awaits us in heaven, something far beyond any experience we can have here. In our world, happiness can often feel conditional, but in heaven, joy is pure and boundless. There's a continuous sense of wonder and delight in everything that surrounds us. What's really incredible is how Jesus revealed the source of this joy to me. Picture feeling completely known and cherished by God. What a blissful concept. Here on earth, we tend to hide parts of ourselves, fearing rejection. Yet in heaven, we're free from such worries. We can be vulnerable, and instead of judgment, we find ourselves welcomed and loved fully. It's a remarkable feeling of liberation. Then there's the thrill of endless exploration. Heaven offers a learning experience that never ceases. We'll continually discover new facets of God, His magnificent creation, and each other. Each revelation brings a refreshing wave of joy that washes over us. Perfect relationships also play a significant role in that joy. Envision a place where misunderstandings, conflicts, or betrayals don't exist. The love we give to one another reflects God's love for us, and that profound connection fosters joy beyond our earthly imaginations. And let's not overlook the absence of pain and tears in heaven. That revelation impacted me profoundly. Jesus showed me that everything that brings us sorrow on earth simply disappears in that glorious place. No illness, no death, no broken bonds. It's an entirely new way of living. I can still see Jesus tenderly wiping away the tears from people's faces as they stepped into heaven. Those tears represented their past heartaches, but as he gently brushed them away, it felt like the weight of those memories was lifted. Though the struggles we faced aren't erased from our minds, they lose their ability to disturb us. Once we enter heaven, we obtain a breathtaking perspective. It's amazing to realize how every bit of our suffering on earth can be turned into something meaningful by God, offering us a sense of peace that runs deep. You begin to feel grateful, even for the hardships you've endured. But let's not focus solely on what's absent. Heaven is about overflowing goodness. There's so much waiting for us. Imagine a realm where warmth and security envelop you like a cozy blanket. That's the essence of heaven. It felt like returning home after a long, tiring journey. One of the most incredible insights I gained was just how much more magnificent the experience in heaven is compared to anything we could conceive. There's a beautiful verse in the Bible that captures this sentiment. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Honestly, that brings an immense comfort. I expected to find a paradise filled with stunning vistas, but what awaited me was filled with surprises. For starters, I never imagined how much laughter and joy would fill the air. Heaven was alive with merriment. Jesus had this infectious sense of humor, a beautiful reminder that joy is woven into the very fabric of God's essence. Can you even imagine that? Then there was the dazzling array of life surrounding me. Of course, I thought I'd encounter people from varied backgrounds, 
but what I actually saw blew my expectations out of the water. Angelic beings abounded, each one more extraordinary than the last. I even witnessed creatures that seemed to have sprung from another dimension, things so surreal they're hard to describe. One of the biggest surprises was how real everything felt. In heaven, I could truly sense the grass beneath my feet, savor the sweet taste of fresh fruit, and feel a gentle breeze brush against my skin. This place wasn't ghostly or abstract. It was more vivid and substantial than anything I'd ever experienced on Earth. And let me tell you about the remarkable individuals I encountered. Imagine Moses passionately teaching a group, delving into the profound meanings of the law, or seeing King David composing new psalms of praise. I even caught a glimpse of Einstein engaged in an animated conversation with the Apostle Paul about the nature of time and eternity. What struck me the most? There was absolutely no sense of hierarchy or fame in heaven. It didn't matter who you were, whether a celebrated biblical personality or a lesser-known saint, everyone was valued equally. Each person was eager to share their stories and just as eager to listen to others. I still recall the image of a woman whom I didn't recognize deeply engaged in conversation with Mary, the mother of Jesus. The bond I witnessed between them radiated warmth and admiration, truly breathtaking. Imagine a place where time stretches infinitely, heaven where relationships blossom and love knows no bounds. I had a life-altering moment that transformed how I viewed existence and what lies beyond our earthly experience. Heaven isn't just a tranquil respite, it's a lively, thriving environment brimming with endless opportunities for growth and learning. While I was there, something thrilling became clear to me. Heaven is not a place of mere existence. It brims with activity as everyone joins in what Jesus called kingdom assignments. These were not just random duties. Each assignment perfectly suited the individual's unique skills and interests. Some folks were inventing wondrous things, others were teaching, and many were overseeing various elements of heaven's infrastructure. What truly amazed me was seeing people embark on adventures to explore different areas of the universe, spreading God's light into new realms. I also noticed angelic beings dedicated to expanding the very essence of heaven, making room for newcomers who would soon enter this splendid domain. Jesus shared insights on how our growth in understanding him translates into our responsibilities in heaven. And here's the kicker. Work there is sheer delight, never a weighty obligation. Every task resonates in harmony with God's will and our fellow beings. He elaborated on how our experiences on earth prepare us for these heavenly adventures. The character we build, the wisdom we gain, and the unique journeys we undertake all play a crucial role in what's in store for us eternally. I was struck by a newfound appreciation for the importance of our choices and actions while we still have breath. If there's one crucial lesson from my experience, it's this. Cultivating a relationship with Jesus is the heart of it all. Every beautiful aspect of heaven, its joy, its serenity, its captivating pursuits, originates from that divine connection with God. Jesus was unequivocal about his role as the gateway to this remarkable eternal existence. His sacrifice and resurrection paved the way for forgiveness, reconciliation with God, and the chance to revel in heaven's splendor. I can't emphasize enough that this isn't just a comforting notion or a pleasant tale. It is a profound reality. Everyone is invited. Jesus extends a heartfelt invitation for each of us to get to know him, a beautiful gift that we shouldn't overlook. Let me share a bit about my own journey. It's been nothing short of life-changing. When you think about eternity and the mysteries that await us beyond this life, it becomes more than just a distant idea. It transforms into something personal that you can really engage with. Don't take today's message lightly. I encourage you to dive deeper. The Bible holds incredible wisdom, especially regarding Jesus and the marvels of heaven. If you have the chance, look up stories of those who have encountered near-death experiences. Their narratives can shed light in unexpected ways. But above all, it's essential to establish a personal bond. You don't need any extraordinary events to know Jesus or to feel assured about your future. He's always there, ready to hear you out. Just invite him into your life with a simple prayer. Ask him to reveal himself to you. For those of you who are already on this journey with him, take this opportunity to deepen your connection. 
keep in mind that we should carry the awareness of eternity close to our hearts. Let thoughts of heaven guide your interactions with others, influence how you invest your time, and determine how you handle your resources. It's crucial to understand that heaven isn't just a destination we'll reach someday. It's a reality we can start to experience now through our relationship with Jesus. The more intimately we know him in this life, the richer our joy in heaven will be for all eternity. It's been wonderful sharing my perspective. I genuinely hope that anyone here today can feel the immense love and joy that Jesus has to offer, not just in this moment, but for all time.